She do what she wanna do. do. Lord to the grave, tell you like it is to your face. She don't play. play. Every chick down for it all. Know that she a boss. She a boss. No competition, no loss. From the Midwest to the A, all them got you tuning in, no delay. Ooh, get you right every time. Keep you laughing on a dime. Tell you truth, no lies. So you can live your best life. Cover all topics, no limits. Got some for your mama and your children. No holding back, no gimmicks. Coming on strong, get straight to business. Oh, yeah. She do what she wanna do. Live life, live life. She like what she wanna do. Live life, live life, she like what she wanna do. Live life, live life, she like what she wanna do. Live life, 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 live life. Hey, it's your girl Autumn, and I welcome you back to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. So this some old random shit, y'all. Let me just <laughs> let me make sure I put that part out there. Like, uh, so Tamara from Tamara to the Break of Dawn podcast is my guest for today. Yes, ma'am. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, <laughs> and y'all know her from the now somewhat infamous podcast Happy Hour. No, don't be modest. We are definitely celebrity podcasters out here. You are you yes. are absolutely right. Yes. And uh Tamara just came off of her first live yes, that ma'am. she did, like her Facebook and well, you were live on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And we'll talk about that in a second, but I'm sitting up here because I I'm recording with somebody on the West Coast. So I gotta stay up all night. And I was like, I wonder what I wonder if Tamara want to record. So <laughs> I hit her up. She was like, "Yeah, I'm with the shit." So here we are. So everybody, welcome Tamara to the show. Hey, wait, wait, let me see. Do I? I don't never know. Let me see. Is this the hand claps? Okay. Hey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I need that. I need. See. That. See. Oh, I be knowing what I'm doing sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how did the live go? How do you Man. feel like your live went? It's crazy because, like, when I first started, I was nervous because, you know, it was my first one. And I don't, y'all know I'm not that tech savvy. So I don't be right. knowing At what I'm, Hey, hey, now. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm just saying that she is, that's I'm, real. I'm really not. I'd be having to ask them, like, every little thing, but I appreciate them because they know what it is. Um, So I was definitely nervous at first, but. It's kind of like y'all being there and, you know, we're all such celebrity podcaster, great friends and whatnot. Um, Right. Shout out to Audrey, Chris and Jay, who are not with us right now. But um, so like me knowing y'all were going to be there, I'm like, okay, well, I know what we do. So it's going to be fun regardless. Um, But yeah, it was cool. It was a. so what did you do to pre- what did you do to prepare? Like what like like let's say like the last like 2 hours leading up to the live. Like so you're nervous or whatever. So what did you do like during that whole time? Okay, so first of all, this is some to- old random ass episode <laughs> y'all by the way. No, it's cool, so. it's cool. But shout out to some Apple Music because I was literally just like listening to R- 90s R&B just and I listen to it like it's current, and but right, I love I it too. because I know the words, you know what I mean? And, and it, it takes me back to certain memories and this, that, and the other. So it's a nostalgia. I, mm-hmm. So I was really just listening to some 90s R&B on Apple Music, they little playlist or whatever, and singing and doing all that, working too, because technically I got off a few out like an hour before or something like that but and then uh put my kind of like out not outline but you know certain things that I'm like I definitely want to make sure I don't forget this put that together you know what I'm saying took a couple shots because (laughs) (laughs) what you take shots of (laughs) um so then you know how I've been on them little UV shooters or whatever so yeah Weston something raspberry vodka the gas station be selling them like 
two for a dollar. So I'd be going in there and getting like eight to 10 at a time. And I got that nice- like some real drunk shit. What is it called again? <laughs> like Weston UV something girl. I don't know. I don't remember anymore, but listen, I buy a lot of them, but I don't drink them. So they're just in the refrigerator for when I want them. Cause my daughters, they be trying to right. you know what I'm saying, come for me and whatnot. But yeah, so took a couple shots and then eight o'clock hit, and I was like, okay, let me go ahead and hit record because <laughs> it's time. Right. It's it's time to go ahead and get it popping. So uh, but it went well. I was there mm-hmm. outside yep. the club. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, I was. I mean, it was on purpose. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like you said, hey. <laughs> It's not you like I had it. It ain't like you was like, come on, let's go go to VIP. We gonna mm-hmm. kick it. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a great night. And then yeah. at the last minute, you just like, like, yeah. nah, nigga, I ain't in the mood. No, I, I didn't do that. I wanted to make sure I did my first live alone just so that I, you know what I'm saying, knew I could do it and wasn't always gonna be dependent on anybody. Um but yeah, no, I definitely though y'all going to have to come on for sure for sure on future ones. Right. So, uh I'm trying to uh I mean, let's just see if we can do it off the top of our head. Yes. Right, right. Uh you got one? I'm trying to think of what has happened um, on Twitter lately. Okay. Hey, what's what's that nigga name on the movie we watched? The documentary? Nigga. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Chris Watts? <laughs> Is okay. that him? That's my award. He nigga. Because here is why he gets the award. Okay, it's wait. Not- tell us, tell us, tell us. Tell All us right, who it y'all. is and everything. So peep game in case you ain't, you know what I'm saying, into Netflix documentaries and whatnot. So American Murder Family Next Door is the story of Shanann, which every time I say her name, I'm I just I'm sorry. Like RIP, I apologize, but I just her name just it throws me it's off. It's tough. It's yeah, tough. yeah, it's it's different. But Shanann, their two daughters. So Chris Watts was her husband. This nigga, and spoiler alert or whatever, if you ain't watched it yet, <laughs> that's I'm sorry. I mean, that's but, on you at yeah, this point. You know what I'm saying? But he was heavier. See, I had peep game how he was heavier at some point in time. This nigga out here losing yes. weight. Right. You felt that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. So now you lose him. Okay. Because I didn't lost weight too. Like I was bigger right. and smaller. I mean, smaller than got bigger than got smaller again. And I'm still on my little snatch 40s journey. But what the hell I look like killing... Not only did he kill his wife, which I'm single, so I have no husband to kill, but this nigga killed his his daughters like they had to be what two and three or something but like that? it was but for me for me okay first let's let's go back just a little bit because again spoiler alert it is what it is yep so american family what the fuck was it called american murder family american next door. Um, american murder family next door on netflix mm-hmm. and so there was this this lady who was basically telling her true story. This and she was an influencer, like a social media influencer. She had like a huge following mm-hmm. on like YouTube and Facebook. And it, she was basically like a lifestyle influencer. And she would um often document um, you know, just things going on with herself and her kids and how she met this wonderful man and it was the best thing that ever could have happened to her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they had kids and, you know, she even had the the time where she had like this, this shirt on. I can't even remember what the shirt said, but it was mm-hmm. telling him that she was pregnant again. Yep, yep. And... Oh, yeah. She was pregnant with a third child. Yes. So she was, she was pregnant with like when this man killed her. And, and the whole thing is like, 
it was one of them things where, and this, this happens more often than we know. Okay. Mm -hmm. This man decided to, I don't know what it was. I don't know what's, what sparked in his head, but he decided he wanted to get fit. Mm -hmm. And as he started getting fit and he's like losing weight, he probably, you know, at the gym, hoes mm -hmm. probably checking them out. He checking the hoes out. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, it. that's just how that shit goes. It it never it never fails, right? He gets with this younger chick. Oh, I didn't realize she was younger. Okay. I think she was a little bit younger. And I forgot that part that she he had a whole side chick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think she was younger because I remember the um the uh detectives saying like yeah this young hot fit you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. he he got to the point where he just didn't want to live that life anymore mm -hmm. i get it you know why i get it because things change mm -hmm. things change like i have a whole theory and and like outlook on how i feel like marriage probably should go I've never been married but just seeing what I've seen mm -hmm. I have this whole like different kind of theory on how how um how marriage should go in that like you really sh you probably should like have to renew your vows or something every couple of years mm -hmm. and like go before a judge because you want to make sure that you're as happy as you were when you got married. Mm. Assume, assuming that you're, you were happy when you got married. Right. You know, I agree with that because I have been married and what I've learned since being divorced is that uh, it's kind of like, you never know what you're going to go through. You're going to grow. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through just life. You know what I'm saying? We don't know what's going to happen. And you have to have that person that's going to be with you at every stages of basically your growth journey, because you're going to be continuing to evolve. So that, that makes a lot of sense. I never thought of it like that. And you have to, you have to make sure that you're still in the marriage for, I don't even necessarily want to say for the same reasons as when you got married, but for, how can I say it? maybe positive reasons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I mean, the marriage could could totally quote unquote be working, but you're not happy with it. Mm -hmm. Right. And it so can't I, be because the kids either. Right, right. That and, and exactly. It can't be, it can't be for anything like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and and again. Again, I, I've never been married. I only know what I've seen. I only know, you know, just relationship wise of what a uh, relationship that I've been in. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, I just think that you need to, I, I, you need to be made to take a look at your bond that mm -hmm. you, and not even like your, not even like your bond before God, but your bond before the court. Mm -hmm. Because when it all comes down to it, it's the court that you're really, you know, what I'm saying like uh, while you're he still here on earth, it's the court and the things that you go through through the court that you're going to have to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. Initially. And mm -hmm. I'm having a hot flash. You see me. <laughs> um, Shout out to the liquor. But. <laughs> <laughs> Where the damn hold on? Uh, I can't find my little. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I'm a fan out. Uh, so so yeah. So that's 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 and and I don't know. That might be a totally totally different episode of how I how I view like marriage and shit like that. How shit like that should go. But anyway, back to this crazy nigga. He, I've said all of that to say because he no longer wanted what she wanted. That was mm -hmm. my whole point. Mm -hmm. He no longer wanted to be the husband of a social media influencer with two kids and one on the way. Mm 
He was over. He was sick of that shit. He was over it. <laughs> he I mean, was. that's the, that's just yeah, the, that's, and, and again, these things happen more than we really want to talk about. Like, mm-hmm. we, you know, people will, will say, you know, oh, well, she was, um, you know, she was, she was cheating and that's why they, they divorced. Uh, but why was she cheating in the first place? Right. Because she no longer wanted to do this shit, but didn't even, but, but the, you know, people never want to just man the fuck up and say that. Mm-hmm. Right. Like they never want to just, and, and I get it. I get it. You don't, you, you never want to just outright break somebody's heart. Mm-hmm. You also don't want to kill them. <laughs> that part. <laughs> so this crazy ass nigga decided. All right. The, the what what's happened? The wife went to North Carolina. Something to, she went to visit. I think his family. No, well, it was both of their families. Oh, like, okay, it, okay. Yeah. So and it was for like six weeks. I'm like, damn, she leaving for six weeks, but she yeah. took the two kids. Mm-hmm. Um. I so I would like to guess that things were okay up until then, and then. Well, this is because when did he meet? Because they they kind of didn't do as good with timelines. Like they were amazing with text messages. And so us seeing her concerns that she would express to her homegirl and even try to talk to him about stuff. Yeah. But we yeah. don't know when, he, like the way they brought old girl in as like a, Oh yeah, and by the way, right. she came like we should have kind of already so we can know when. So when I think about it, I, I I'm glad you brought that up. I think it it had been going on for a little while. Mm-hmm. Like it, you yeah. know, it wasn't so yeah, so maybe things weren't but she she thought that things were okay. Yeah, yeah. And and maybe if you think about it, he couldn't really spend that time with her because mm-hmm. that's what I was leading up to cuz when the wife went away, he spent all this time, mm-hmm. this whole five weeks yep. with, and wait a minute, didn't she, she wrote those letters. So the, the mistress who said that he, you know, he told that, you know, mm-hmm. y'all know the married man lie. We're get, we're separated. Right. We're getting a divorce, blah, blah, blah. She mm-hmm. believed it. You know, mm-hmm. why would, I mean, why wouldn't she? Because she really doesn't have a reason to believe he's going to lie to her. And then, um, she, so she was writing letters to him, but, and the one letter said, I loved seeing you play with the kids. See, I thought that was a letter from the wife to oh, him. Oh, maybe it was. Because oh, she yes. Because yes. she said something about, I'm going to fight for this marriage. Yes, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But still, though, like, when did she write that? Did she write the letter while she was away and then brought it home? Because why didn't she? I mean, I guess I don't know the dynamics of their relationship, but why didn't she just talk to him about that? Like, why did she... I don't know. Letter. They I, they did. They they did a good job of like cuz the best part about it was them with the, the fucking text messages. Yeah. Like seeing you know, what she was writing back and forth to her friend and what mm-hmm. she was writing back and forth to him. But anyway, this nigga decides <laughs> that he wants to be with the 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 little fitness chick that he been girl dating. they was off in the mountain baby taking like, pictures yeah and she talking about oh i'm so glad you out here mwah, 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 and all that like they they showed that but we don't know when they met though right is the thing <laughs> and he was like all right i'm about to be with her mm-hmm. it's about to be what it is mm-hmm. soon as this bitch get home i'm a killer it was definitely premeditated. They didn't mm-hmm. say that, I don't think, throughout the whole thing. But you couldn't have. It it had to have been premeditated. Yeah. So she came home at two in the morning. That she. Uh, well, she had. Well, oh, wait. Okay. Here's here's what happened. This is when the letter came in. She wrote the letters after she came home from Denver. I mean, from uh, um uh, from North Carolina okay. because then. That weekend, she left and she went to some sort of like oh, yeah. business retreat yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. Because so okay. she, 
yeah so she comes back her friend her bff drops her off at like two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and her bff knew that she had a doctor's appointment in the morning and all of that and boom nobody knows where she is and this nigga they get to the house and the police he was just everything was weird but my whole thing is you did not have to kill these people. And he, and he, how did he kill her? So he strangled her. Yep. And yeah, he strangled her and his daughters. Cause he put the blankets over their heads. No, 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 no. See, that's what he told the police. Remember he told the police that he strangled them after he strangled her. Or wait a minute. He strangled. We know he strangled her for sure. Yeah, he he but yeah, and he said that he strangled them, but that's not what happened. This is why I'm so fucking distraught. When it all came out, come to find out, he drove them to the oil tank. He put out. them in there. L girl. I cannot believe you missed that part. Listen, he, it was an hour drive. Mm. He he wrapped her, he wrapped the mama up and pulled her. That's when he pulled up the truck to the, to the house. He took the kids. Bitch, the kids were still alive. Yep. This is why I'm so fucked up. He the kids the, that she was like, no, daddy. That's the second yeah. kid. The yeah. first kid he threw in. I can't I can't remember what the first kid said, but he threw the kids. Where, is mommy okay or something like that? Right. Yeah. Right. That's what's for so what nigga like you did what like you threw these kids in the oil in an oil girl and then his tears in the court and or i mean not in the court after he didn't pass the lie detector and he this is why i nominated him for the ward it's not even what he did because that's trash but it's about how he behaved after he after they busted him out because of of course you ain't gonna pass no lie detector test when you lie in because unless you're like a complete psychopath which i don't believe that about him i don't believe he had mental health nah you was just me that's as hell yeah you found this little young thing and you wanted to go off with that and when he called his dad in there and he's like they don't believe me no we don't believe you you know what i mean like the way he behaved in that police department, like he didn't understand. And you know what you did. Like, it ain't even what you did. It's how you conducted. And then even the neighbor was like, he ain't never this talkative. Right. <laughs> He's usually quiet. This Girl, is he could not wait right. to, for that man to leave so that he could snitch. Like, yep. hey. And you, yeah, he, he, yeah, yo, but yeah. that was some crazy mm. shit. Like that dude, that's like, and then what was it? He t was it? He confessed so that he wouldn't get the death penalty, something like that. So he got three consecutive life sentences. Which I mean. <sighs> Yeah, he'll serve the rest of his life in jail because I seriously doubt he'll ever be eligible for parole. No, but no. but it's still like, I don't know, man. I mean, mm -hmm. so uh, do I have a shut the fuck up award? Mm -hmm. Um, did I do this one already? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you're about to say. God, I feel like I, I feel like I've done that. I was gonna say, I know I was talking about it somewhere. I was gonna say, um, how Twitter decide how Twitter decided that it was a bad thing. 
I have done this and I can't remember. It was on one of our shows. I'm trying to think <sighs> if it was the podcast happy hour. It might have been. Let me think. Out. Okay. Uh I I I I'm gonna have to come back to the shut the fuck fuck up award because I I just ain't got one on this random ass episode right now. That's okay. Like it just kind of is what it is. So let me look because I'm about to ask you a random ass question. All right. Who okay, here's a good one. <laughs> and you gotta answer in like five seconds. Oh shit. Ten okay. seconds. Okay. If you could pick anybody to be on your podcast, who would it be? Dang. The first person that comes to mind is Black Paco. We already, and I think it's just because I. Like, okay, we'll pick. Okay, we'll pick somebody else. Um, I mean, I'm talking like, and I'm talking anybody, like celebrity, anybody. <sighs> J Cole. J Cole. Oh, you like J Cole? I am definitely. I love his music. Like, um, what is that album? I for, I can't remember what it's called. Um. The one where he's sitting on the building. Matter of fact, it's probably in my album. I mean, I know it's in my album. I'm about to tell you what it. J. Cole. 2014 Forest Hills Avenue. Uh, I mean, Forest Hills Drive. That's like my favorite album of his. But it's it's not even just his music, but it's just like his heart for people how he just stays out the way despite being famous and he just don't, I mean, this dude got married and had a whole kid and we ain't know nothing about it. So either him or Joseph Proctor, Tommy from power. Cause you know, I love power mm -hmm. because he also got a whole wife that, and I follow him on Instagram and Twitter and you never see, I even tried to Google to see, cause I wanted to see if she looked like us or more like him, you know what I'm seeing? And you can't find her nowhere. So that level of privacy as a celebrity is just kind of amazing to me. But also, I love J. Cole's music. I love kind of like what I know of him, what he stands for. Tommy, I mean, Joseph Proctor. I love Tommy. Definitely Tommy. Yeah, Definitely I Tommy. love Tommy. Um, and just... He's so different when you hear him talk like regular. So like you a good actor if you could completely transform. So yeah, probably one of them or both of them. Okay. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think, um, I think I just came up with a topic. <laughs> okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I come back to my shut the fuck up award, but we got, we, we got time. So mm -hmm. I, I've heard on your podcast and in the group chat and I think a little bit on podcast happy hour about you being single. Oh, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had this like written down for an episode that I was going to do by myself. But since you're here. Oh, OK, great. Um, About you being single. Mm -hmm. And about how long you've been single mm -hmm. and some reasons why you, you're single. So give us a little bit of background on how long you've been single. Mm -hmm. Let's just start there. All right. So as I said earlier, I was married and then I got divorced in, it's funny, November of 2007. I just remember the date. It was November 13, 2007. I'm just like that with dates, but, mm -hmm. and so I've been single for almost 13 years now. I mean, as far as actually having a title in a relationship, I've right. had interactions and I guess situationships, but actually like being in a relationship and like this, what we doing and whatever. Nah, I ain't had that. So do you think, so, okay. So uh, 13 years, it's been 
What's this? 2020? It's been know, nine and a half, I think, for me. Mm. So I, 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 my first, well, I don't know if this is my first question. I think mm. it might be my second or third. But do you ever think that in meeting people, so say, for instance, you know, shit was normal right <laughs> you're going out you're doing things mm -hmm. you're meeting people mm -hmm. and in meeting these in meeting these these people you tell them i've been single for 13 years do you ever feel like afraid to say that like do you ever not necessarily afraid to say that but just a little you know what I mean like timid like thinking well what are they gonna think about me being single for so long right so I don't I mean it is what it is the answer is the answer I don't worry about really what someone will think because I can't I'm not gonna tell them something else you know what I'm saying if you ask me but I always get why I've stayed single and I, I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, the answer that I have, I don't know what they're looking for, but I feel like it's never like, I have to explain the whole story, not really anything to do with my divorce, but kind of like what I've been focused on since then mm -hmm. for them to understand. It can't just be a, I don't know. Cause I know why, but you got to go on this little, you know, not long story, but but their answer, like, no one understands that. It's just mind-boggling to anybody. It is. Even people who know me will be like, oh, I thought you would have found, oh, I thought you were with somebody. And I'm like, no, I just, I remain single. Right. It's, and it's so, like, nerve-wracking when people are like, like, I know that I've met men and I'll be like, yeah, I've been single X amount of years. And they just be like, oh, ah, yeah. ain't no way. Like, are you serious? So you mean to tell me? And so I, uh, my the first thing is I break it down like, okay, that doesn't mean that I haven't been human mm -hmm. in those do they, years. Do they ask you what's wrong with you? Because I get that question. Yeah. Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. Oh, you must be crazy. Yeah. Or you must be. And you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? Think what you want. Mm -hmm. think what you want I don't um I was thinking the other day about how <laughs> how some years ago I would be like yeah you, you know, know how they used to be like we single by choice you know mm -hmm. and that's partially true I mean if I had the if I had to if I had the uh, if I had a good choice I choose that choice. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. but after being, when you've been single for so long, like, what do you think, <laughs> what do you think the hurt, the hurdles would be like? Ooh, um, Cause I just think about, okay. So you, you already, so your, your children, you have children that live at home. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't, it's just me. And I think about stuff like space. Mm. Like yeah. uh, I initially think if I meet someone, I don't think that I'm going to be like, I'm not going to like jump at moving in with one another. Oh, no. Yeah. I, it's interesting. It's funny you say that because whenever my kid like because okay you know you as a parent you have this unconditional love for your kids and whenever they get on my nerves to like i'm at this point where i'm just like i've been a mom since i was 19 i moved out of my mom's house when i was 19 when i became a mom i've never lived alone and i'm to this point where i'm like i don't want to be bothered which it's weird because then i've i've already been single for a long time and there is this desire that's actually creeped up more recently. That's why I was kind of like, really, this is what we got to <laughs> talk about. Um, but where I've just been like, it's this contrast of I want to share my life with somebody 
but at the same time, I don't want to be bothered. Like I wouldn't want to rush and move in with anybody. So there's that. There's also just the, I don't know how to function in a relationship. Like I'm accountable really to nobody. So then to have somebody trying to check for me or you, I got to consider you, I mean, I could do it, but I know it would be a huge adjustment because I've basically trained myself how to only focus on me and my kids. So mm -hmm. when I don't want to be bothered with Anybody, I put my phone on. I've been doing that a lot more lately. Put my phone on, do not disturb, and just kind of go on with my day. And so it would be weird to have to like consider someone's feelings and think like, okay, wait, maybe I should check on them or maybe I should, you know, because I could be selfish to a degree right now. Yeah, I mean... I don't even know. It's just so like, it's like, I want to cuddle, <laughs> but then I want to like be in my own space after mm -hmm. that. I don't know. And, and that's not to say that <laughs> that's not to say that I never want to like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe be engaged and married and whatever and live together. Cause that's really the only way that I think I'm going to move in with somebody is if I'm married. Right. Which is something that I don't, I've, I have not foreseen in years. Like I, it's not that I don't have the desire. It's just, I feel like I'm being, um, I feel like I'm being like logical and saying that it's, the way that I want it is probably not going to happen mm -hmm. in a sense. And, and that's not to say it's not going to happen, but it's just like, if it doesn't happen, it's just like, eh, all right, I kind of right. figured that this is how it's going to shake. But um, just thinking about going from lit, like, just like you said, like not having to really answer mm to yeah. anyone again like I, I I've lived alone I've been an empty nester for five years now mm -hmm. um and then like going through the whole coronavirus stuff mm -hmm. it's tough <laughs> you know what I'm saying? it's tough uh being alone and 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 I've gone through you know hell of a lot of shit over yeah. the past you know yeah. like year and so it's been it's been really tough like I I think about relationships and, and I'm not even like, I swear, like, you know what I'm saying? Like niggas, are, if I got to tweeting about how I feel I can function in relationships, like uh, niggas would be calling me a pick me. Like I'm <laughs> that easy. Like I'm, I'm so easy to please. I'm so fucking easy to please. It's ridiculous. But people still just kind of miss they, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just kind of miss that that curve. But I'm going to say this. I wrote down three. No, I wrote down a bunch of reasons, actually, as to why I'm actually single. Mm. They might be. I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I hope y'all take me seriously. But <laughs> the first reason that I wrote down, and let me know what you think on this. Okay. Niggas be lying. Who? Now, when you say lying, I mean lying. Niggas be lying. I think. Gosh, because they do, but I think if you have that view of all men that has to stem from past hurts because not all men lie or i mean we all kind of lie to a degree. and i'm not, and i'm not even necessarily generalizing you know what i'm saying i'm not necessarily mm -hmm. putting everybody in in a in a bucket i'm just saying niggas be lying so what do you like lying about being faithful, what they're going to do, how they feel about you. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, it could be any of this. It's like, so what one thing that I've learned, so uh, let me start here. If you ever feel like you have to lie or I, this is what I tell people all the time when I meet them. There's never, ever, ever a reason to have to lie or withhold information from me. And I'm going to tell you why. Whatever it is, uh, uh, the, the, the answer is going to be yes or no, right? Mm -hmm. It's it, whatever, whatever it is, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I am a grown woman. Mm -hmm. I understand you may not want to hurt my feelings for whatever reason. Um, or, or whatever other reason you would feel like you just wouldn't want to tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. But I'm the most understanding mm. person. I am one of the most understanding people that you were you will ever meet. There is not a whole lot that you can tell me, even when it comes down to um, things that you like, sexual things that you like. Um, there, there's not a whole lot of things that you could tell me that I'm gonna like turn my nose up at you. Right. I'm gonna keep it one hundred. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that too. Or, uh, that's not my flavor. And I'm not, and you know, if that's something that you really, really like, I'm probably not going to be able to give that to you. So I'm not sure if that's going to work. And I, and I'm not just talking about sexual things. I'm just talking about in general. But let right? me, can I pause you real quick? Cause I love that you brought that up though. Even the sexual things, because I think that is such an important conversation that you need to be having. Like, and I know you've either, we've talked about that offline or you've talked about that on your show but I love that you talk about the importance of that because you might not like you got to be sexually compatible especially when you think about me like I do want to remarry I'm not like jaded on marriage I'm I know I didn't marry for the right reasons um I know we all grown out here like I'm 40 years old. I know what I like, what turns me on, all that stuff. So it's like, it's a bunch of bull if we don't have these conversations because we're, we're setting people up for failure. You know what I mean? To like not please us. And you want to be pleased when you're having sex. Like you want to be turned on. You want your man to be turned on and him be pleased as well. So it's kind of like, if you don't have these conversations, um, is stupid, but I'm with you. I'm not going to judge you because you say whatever. I feel like niggas do be lying. I just, I don't think all do though. Not, oh, no, I, and, yeah. and I don't, I don't think so either. I, yeah. I'm, I'm speaking. I never like to generalize anybody, any right. group of people. I'm saying my experiences other people's experiences that are around me mm -hmm. there's always a lie and it, there's always a lie that you really didn't have to lie about mm -hmm. which really pisses me off yeah 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 those are okay. the worst lies like who so that's one reason i wrote that's down a flashback another thing that i wrote down was People who have insecurities and to go kind of with the niggas be lying, like, are way too, how do I want to say it? They, they can't be transparent. Mm. I also think, like, given what we do, and it's, with podcasting and interacting with other men and all that stuff, there is no way either of us could be with an insecure man because if you have whoever on the show and y'all talking about whatever, and you never know where these conversations are going to go. And it's not because necessarily niggas are trying to be slick. It's just, you're talking stuff comes up just kind of like this random episode. And I think about that. Like, 
if I'm talking with so-and-so and we're talking about relationships or we're talking about whatever we talk about, are they going to, like, it has to be someone who's secure, but also because when people are insecure, it's almost like to some degree, sometimes they try to dim your light because mm -hmm. they don't want you to shine. So they try to, cause that's how it kind of was with my ex where he had, and it wasn't until we were like breaking up that he finally was admitting it or whatever, but it's like, he was insecure about me. He didn't feel like whatever. I don't even fully remember what he said. I just remember him saying, that's why I did this. It wasn't because I was whatever. It was because I was scared. Okay. But uh. nigga, you should have just said that we could have talked about it. I could have like, I'm not out here trying to be grimy and I feel like sometimes men, when, I don't know, I can't say women too, but I think sometimes when men get with women that they're really not ready for, and that's what it was with him. Women too. Yeah, I just, I don't, I didn't have that experience, so I can only speak from my experiences of the men that I tend to have been drawn to were men that really weren't ready for a woman like me. And it's not like I'm like special or whatever. I know I'm dope, but I'm just saying like, I'm not I trying to, it. yeah. Well, I'm trying to say for the listeners, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't know me, mm -hmm. but like they though had all these insecurities and all these things. And so I would notice that it would then, because they didn't give me the security and the reassurance that I needed just in the relationship and in their feelings for me, then it would, and then I would see them who they just devote their all to or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, what's wrong with me? So then it would, instead of me saying, well, that's a them problem, it, cause it really is because that's been the pattern over and over. Then it, mm -hmm. for a while it was like, okay, well, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. I feel it. So, and for me, so I, I can give you an example. Um, of of guys that I've dealt with that have been insecure. This guy, <laughs> I I be cracking myself up, man. So before I moved here, this guy that I knew in like junior high school or some shit like that, mm. pop back up on Facebook. You know how you know how it is, mm -hmm. okay? Pop up on Facebook. I think maybe I was like under somebody's thread and he saw me, he slid, slid in my inbox, friend me, whatever. We exchanged numbers. Now, not really sure why he thought everything was going to be the exact same as it was when we were like 12 <laughs> and 13. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it didn't really, eh, it wasn't really clicking with me. Right. But once I knocked him down off of that, now let me put this out here. Because anybody else, I wouldn't even continued on. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, that was just, it was, it was real silly. You know what I'm saying? That he was mm -hmm. acting like we were still, you know, but he was fine. He's fine as hell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like he's gotten, he's gotten more fine with time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you I gave him another. Well, sometimes. I mean, my Black God. Black like, age very, shout out to all the older like late uh, 30s and up black men is like yeah fine yeah, so yeah, i'm fine. like okay you know all right let's you know so then i would so when i was when i was up north i was like heavily involved in sorority life hmm. i mean like every weekend like i was always doing something but it ain't like i had shit else to do Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was just, you know, I poured my whole self into it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, I'd be like, oh, I got an event. I got an event. And he would, he told me one time, like, well, you know, how, how is it that you're doing this? And how are you, how do you feel like you're going to have time for me? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm. first of all, nigga, 
<laughs> you really ain't even we really ain't even really did like you ain't asked me really asked me to do nothing you trying right. to chill quote unquote mm. you trying to lay up and all this and, and i'm not on that which is right. why we hadn't even like gone we had um met we had met up went on a date uh, like went to this little sports bar watched football game cool after that it was more like oh he trying to come through i, I wasn't on that right. then i mean you know said so that was that was enough because mm-hmm. that story can go on forever. Mm-hmm. But that's what, you know, it's like, so am I supposed to just sit in the house? Just like now, I do, well, you know, in normal times, I do shit. I travel. I travel with my girlfriends. I travel for work. I, you know, I, I, wanna, I want to travel with a man. If you're trying to travel, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But at, but I, all I'm saying is, I don't need the insecurities. I just don't need it. You're not good. If it's one thing that you're not going to get from me, it's going to be, I, I'm not going to be insecure. Yeah, I'm not going to be insecure. I don't give a damn who you flirting with. I don't care. Like none of this shit phases me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you cross them. Look, I'm, I'm naturally flirtatious. That's not me saying that. Oh, I just be out here flirting. Um, but I am naturally flirtatious. I flirt. I don't even be knowing the fuck the shit is happening. That's what people say about me. I be chilling. Like, I don't be I don't, even knowing the shit is happening. Nothing. That's so I'm not gonna me. be like. I'm not gonna be upset with you flirting. I, I, not not. If you're long as you're not like being totally disrespectful, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Um. So I can't deal with the insecurities, but. And moving along real quick, I want to ask you this. What do you think you, what would you, what do you think would be a problem with you? Like an issue um, that I have for a man? Yeah, like, like he would, like a man would be like, man, that's, that's a problem. Like, what do you think? Mm, That's so funny because I've actually been thinking about this a lot lately because of different podcasts that I've listened to have been the therapy I didn't ask for and didn't know I needed. Um, Mm -hmm. um, And so, and I'm actually, so I was listening to, I'll just say views because I can't remember the therapy. They had an actual female. Yeah, views from the seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet, but I, I've been seeing the tweets. I'm going to tell you, like, give yourself some time. And I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, that was on Monday. I listened to that when my computer was down and I took the rest of the day off and then happened to listen to that. Took a nap afterwards because that's just how deep she was in my business on some stuff that I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, I ain't, I ain't come here for this. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so one of the things that I've noticed about myself is that I am emotionally unavailable. It's like, I feel things deeply. I am a very passionate person and all that. But at the same time, it is so easy for me to just disconnect from people. It is so easy for me to just it's almost like some because now, mind you, this is because of the experiences that I've had with men. So it's weird because it's like I, I have hope for whatever, but I don't know how to walk that out because I somebody would just have to be patient with me. Like when you give me the reassurance and not ridiculous reassurance, because I'm not an insecure person like I'm I know I'm attractive. You know what I mean? I know I have a great personality. I know I'm loving and intelligent and just a dope person. But at the same time, because I've wasted energy into a lot of things that didn't really need it or deserve it. Now I'm at this point where I'm like, okay, well, let me just, you know, not jump and just want to dive in like I be wanting to. And so it makes it easy for me to just like, I'll accept a compliment. I'll say, what, uh, uh, excuse me, accept whatever, but I'm not going to assume anything. You have to like spell it out. Right. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. You got to say, this is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I also, it's easy for me to cut people off. Like it's easy for me to just, I, I can be hot and cold now. The thing about it is I'm loyal though. So 
I'm hot and cold as I wrestle with my own kind of like, I don't want to say insecurity in myself, but maybe insecurity in this, like in a relationship, like, can I really rest in this? <clears throat> Excuse me. And the reason why is because I love hard and I'm not going to mm. waste my love on, you know, whatever. Right. Okay. So I'll tell you mine. My thing is I have abandonment issues and I am grown up enough to admit that I get extremely anxious and scared when I think I, when I think that a person is being standoffish or when if I think that how can I if I think if if I have any type of thought that they are like <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say like for like if they're trying to, what the fuck am I trying to say? It's like, if they're not, if, if, okay. When, oh, this is it. When routines start to change. Mm. Okay. Because when you are getting to know someone and it's been a while. The routine always changes. There, there's not a time when it doesn't change. It always changes, but it just depends on kind of how it changes, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes it changes to where you're not as engaged or you're not seeing each other uh, like you were or, you know, when it goes like kind of like on a, on a negative for me, if if I'm thinking like, well, damn, like, you know, we used to see, you know, we used to chill twice a week. Now it's just like once every other week. Like, what are we doing? You know, that's when the when are we doing? What are we doing? When the energy you, is not the same in the effort. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah. I and and it could and it could always very well be that something is going on, especially so if you're dealing with um I was going to say a man, but even if you're dealing with someone like me, because I know that when I, which is, which is another issue for, of mine, when I'm going through things, I don't necessarily shut down until I don't shut down unless I'm just completely overwhelmed, mm -hmm. but I do kind of sh shut people out. Oh yeah, I put myself in this little bubble and it takes me a little while to crawl out. So I've always had to give a disclaimer and say, Hey, you know, if there's ever a time when, you know, I, I just, you just don't hear from me in, you know, by X time, this is the reason why, because sometimes I get so overwhelmed with things and I don't know how to. And then when, when I have not dealt with anyone romantically that has ever been able to well I have once but that has ever really been able to help to pull me out of that and I'm not saying that that's anybody's responsibility but as a partner yeah. you know I do, I would hope that they would just not you know leave me well, it's just like they say, it's not 50-50. Sometimes it's 80-20. Right, exactly. Like, it exactly. shouldn't always be 80-20, but in those moments when it needs to be, you got to lift each other up because that's exactly. how life is going to be. And even in and even in, in on that note, it's like, I never want to put any type of burden on anybody else. And not saying that, 
I just I just don't want to like if I'm going through things, I don't want them to have to go through those things with me, even though that's what partnership is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's mm-hmm. what I always feel very guilty about that. But going back to having abandonment issues, like I I I I do. I, sometimes like especially when but okay, I, to be fair, I've never been wrong about it. Mm-hmm. I've never been wrong about it. And and this is not one of those things where, you know, you could say, oh, well, you put it in the universe. That's not what this is. Because what people have to realize is, yeah, we we could put we we uh put things out in the universe, but we can't we when we put things out in the universe and we we deal with the universe, we're dealing with the universe within our alignment, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing that I can do to make somebody else do something right Mm -hmm. it's all it's I can't say I can say you know what when I get home this actually happened to me once when I get home I'm gonna have a parking spot in front of the house like I'm not gonna have to walk four blocks park my car when I used to live in Philadelphia and I literally got home and there was a parking spot right in front of the house this never happens right I can't do that for somebody else they got to do that <laughs> for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't be like, oh, shit. Tamara get home. She's going to have a thousand dollar check. And that's <laughs> that's not how that works. Now, I might not even be able to do that for myself, but you get my point. Right. So. It's like. If I start to feel that somebody is going to disappear, they're the ones with the action. It's their action. It's my thought, but it's their action. So there's nothing that I could have done to prevent that action. I just saw it coming. Right. So I, I say all that to say, I've never been wrong. The let my last, the last man that I was with the last man that I, that it's been almost 10 years since I've been with the very last time that I saw him in Dallas, I said, I have a feeling that this is going to be the last time that I see you. Hmm. And he said, girl, you always talking that dumb shit. You always, it's, that's not going to, and I'm like, I'm just, and it's not because I don't, you know, I mean, like we were literally, I'm going to tell his story one day. We were literally like, he was, he was looking to move to, I was in Toledo, Ohio. He was looking to move to Toledo, Toledo and he had me looking at houses. Like Mm -hmm. it was, it was pretty serious, Mm -hmm. but I knew when I saw him, I just knew it. I just like, no, was it we in Dallas? No, we were in, um, um, Tennessee. We were in Tennessee. I knew, I just knew it. And I was right. Some people call that intuition. I call it discernment. It, it all depends on how you look at it it's the same thing to me, but it's just a different word or whatever. Um, But it's scary. It it was, I was so scared because I didn't want that to happen. And I felt, I'm like, Oh my God, what's wrong with me? You know, it's, it's going to be over again, which it hadn't, it was had absolutely nothing to do with me. I, you know, again, I'm gonna tell that story one day, but of course that's immediately what I'm going to think. And I'm like, okay, so here I am, thought that I was, I thought that this was the love of my life. Hmm. He was, in a sense, like, but he left me. Like, he said he never would leave me. He said he was never going to, and he left me. And I understand why he left me. I understand. I get it. It wouldn't have worked. But even looking at that and and him being the best man that I've ever had a relationship with to this day like how scary is that you know what i'm saying like i'm it's it's so it's just scary it's just like i don't want to have to deal with that mm. like i would rather take just like not even take a chance than to have to deal with being abandoned again 
<clears throat> you know what is interesting? It's man, it's funny how much relationships are coming up a lot lately in my life and conversations I'm having with people, but you say that was the best relationship you ever had. My fear, because my relation, my marriage was very unhealthy and very not good for either of us because I had my own toxic ways of not being emotionally available. And part of it was due to fear of abandonment or neglect because of bio dad issues that I was, didn't even know was a thing back then. Um, but my fear is that that unhealthy marriage that I had is going to be the only chance. Like I've never had a, Oh, if you're happy, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Like right. not happy wife, happy life. Cause it's really happy spouse, but I've just never had where a man's been like, I want to make you happy. Like right. I've had where I wanted to try to make somebody happy or, which I get, yeah, happiness is within blah, blah, blah. Y'all know what I mean. But I, I always say contribute to there someone's you go. happiness. Yeah, I've wanted to contribute to someone's happiness, but I've never want, I haven't had anybody want to contribute to mine. I haven't had anybody want to really support my dreams or support the things that are important to me, which it's not a lot at all. Like I'm not a very high maintenance person. Ooh, excuse me, person, I just need loyalty. I just need to know that at the end of the day, me opening up to you, this is where I struggle with asking people for help, like, mm -hmm. or even letting people into like what I'm really thinking or, I mean, ask, I don't even like asking like the questions I'd be asking y'all for help. You know, I'm not tech savvy. I don't even like asking that. I just don't like asking people excuse me for anything because I don't like to feel like I'm a burden but then again I would drop anything for anybody Same. but I think I've had to balance that out because that's unhealthy too I gotta have my own boundaries so that's kind of where I'm working on in my journey but part of why I don't want to feel like a burden is because I've been made to feel like I was a burden like I'm too much or and so I'm just kind of like, well, I'd rather be alone than have somebody try to make me feel like anything because it's better to be single than to still feel like you're alone in a relationship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, it's just, it's tough, it, especially again, being single for so long. And then, and, and and the other thing, and we'll wrap it up after this. The other thing too, it's like, how much time and effort and energy do you have to invest mm. to and 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 um and and you know roughing up your routine. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be knocked off of knocked out, out of your routine to mm -hmm. to put somebody else in in the mix. Mm -hmm. and you're gonna give all this time and energy, and then is it gonna work out? Like you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just it's so. I mean, I don't know. I guess ten years ago, you know what I'm saying? Fifteen years ago, it didn't it didn't really scare me or it doesn't scare me now. It didn't really shake me at all to consider being in, in a relationship, like to consider actively uh, making myself available mm -hmm. to be in a relationship. Whereas now it's just like, if I make myself available, like I really need this to to work out because I'm and and I'm that type of person that I don't ever feel like time has been wasted I think that people come into your life for a reason season or a lifetime mm -hmm. or a reason in a lifetime or a season and in, in a reason you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like I believe that there's all types of combinations that way but I kind of choose to just be like I'm cool right now 
think and it sucks because again times like this where i've like really been like i've been i've been emotionally like beat the fuck down Mm. so this would be the such a great time to just have someone to just somebody that's just gonna say you know what everything is gonna be all right you know what I'm saying? Like just to hear those words from someone that you're involved with yeah. um on a on a serious level, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but that's why, nigga. That's that's why I, that's why I'm just out here just not even <laughs> doing shit. But uh I think we did good <laughs> yeah. for a random episode, right? right so right. <laughs> all right, so real quick. I'm going to tell everybody about podcast happy hour. Did I do that already? No. No. Okay. So boom, podcast happy hour for those of you who are just now tuning in or this is your first episode being here or you've never heard of podcast happy hour. Um, Podcast happy hour is a, um, um, a show, I guess you can say Uh, like a, um, a revolving show. Yep. um, That, I, I, an idea I came up with and I came to my podcast sisters and was like, Hey y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all trying to, y'all trying to do this podcast happy hour because we're, we were already like on zoom and mm-hmm. stream yard and all these different places, just talking and drinking and everything. We always have great content and we're just talking. So I'm like, let's put it into a podcast. So once a month on one of our platforms, you get podcast happy hour. So the very first one was, was Tamara's. Mm -hmm. I'll have that one in the show notes. That was in August, September. It was me. I'll have that in the show notes. And then, um, on October 16th, which, um, will probably pass by the time you hear this. But so if you haven't heard it, it's uh, probably already out. Mm -hmm. Um, Jay from Jay's quick three is on her platform Mm -hmm. next month, November. It'll be on, all tales pod yep and december it'll be on chris with shenanigans with friends we're gonna have a christmas party and uh, mm-hmm. or a holiday party whatever you want to say and we're mm-hmm. gonna have on cute sweaters so yep um and then we're gonna keep going after that we haven't figured out you know the ins and outs of how we're gonna continue to do this but it's been great it's been like such a great time like i, I hope i don't know if you've already heard the <laughs> october 16th episode <laughs> episode Woo. <laughs> you already know it's funny if not after you listen to this i need you to go and listen to that mm-hmm. so without further ado thank you tamra thank you for coming on at the last minute because i'm over here just trying to stay up now i'm trying to rush you off the damn thing because i got a, another recording at <laughs> but crack of dawn hours right now but go ahead and tell us um tell us how we can find you and tell us a little bit about your show all right, so how you can find me, IG, Twitter. You ain't going to start with the hey, girl, hey. Come on now. I know you're it's right, late. You're right, you're right. Okay. Hey, y'all, hey. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, I guess we'll start with the show then. Tamara Till the Break of Dawn. I talk a lot about kind of like what I'm going through, how I'm trying to grow. That's basically just what it is. Every episode, it's almost like an online diary in a sense, and then I try to like highlight in this foolishness though what is one thing i'm trying to grow and challenge people to grow really focus on like being mentally emotionally spiritually physically healthy to the best of our ability um but then new episodes every thursday how you can find me i'm on twitter and instagram tamra the dawn so tamra's t-a-m-a-r-a which if you're watching you could see it at the bottom of the screen or whatever but Tamra, every other letter is an A. It's Tamra, as you'll hear in my intro. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and then underscore the underscore Dawn. And yeah, follow me. I follow back. I I am petty, but it's not in a malicious way. I like to laugh. So you definitely going to either be laughing or inspired following me. Something like that. One way or the other. Yep, yep. She be on her bullshit. 
I, I do. I do. I do. So, <laughs> but you own up to it because that's what we do. Exactly. We own the two up of us. To, yes, we own yeah. up to our stuff. Yep. Okay. I can't wait till I have my live. But anyway, because <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm doing a fucking live just so that I could clear my name. <laughs> Of the uh oh, of God. the of the stuff that people be talking about saying about me and podcast happy hour. But anyway, so thank you again for coming on the show. Yeah. And um I ain't got shit else to say. So until y'all hear us again, <laughs> bye peace.